So at Select, we work on a bunch of different problems on all of which involve predicting demand and uh, taking some decisions based on the demands of products at different stages in the inventory cycle. So in this talk, we'll focus on a, a particular uh, problem that we solve. Uh, but before we get there, I think it's useful to understand what the inventory cycle at a fashion retailer looks like. This is something which, after I joined Select, I realized is fairly complicated in itself. So the process starts about a year before the products are actually placed in the store, and that is what we call the plan optimization phase. You can see on the uh, top left corner. That is when retailers make decisions. Uh, so if it's fall 2017, I, retailers are making decisions about fall 2018 in terms of how they should allocate their budget to different products, different stores, different brands. Sorry, not products, different brands, different departments, stores, and so on. So they're figuring out their budget strategy. At this point, there are no products uh, under consideration. So there's some amount of demand that needs to be predicted to make those decisions. The next phase is the buy optimization phase, and that will be the focus of this short talk. Uh, this is the phase which occurs about one quarter in advance of actually placing the product in the store. So if it's fall 2017, I'm looking at products for winter 2018 and figuring out, uh, okay, these are the products I see on the market and in fashion it changes every year. So these are the products for the upcoming season. How many should I buy of what styles, put it in what store, so retailers are making decisions around these. So they have to figure out essentially place orders for the inventory to be bought. Once that inventory is bought, the next focus is on allocations, and this is something that happens throughout the season. So once the products end up in the warehouse throughout the season, they're figuring out decision in terms of which product should go to which stores based on inventory level, demand they're seeing at the stores, and so on. And then once the product's in the stores, demand based on demand prediction, they need to figure out what to sell at full price, what time to mark down if they have too much inventory, and so on. And once the product's in the store, there's a separate process, which is fulfillment, which is uh, you know, trying to source the online orders that you pay, so place. And some of those may go through the store, and one needs to balance demand for the products in store versus uh, what they see online. So there's a bunch of demand prediction problems. We'll focus on the buy optimization phase. All of these uh, problems involve similar data, uh, but they're predicting at different points in the future at different levels of aggregation across products, departments, and classes, and so on. So buy optimization essentially specifically involves two sorts of questions which merchants and buyers and retailers need to answer. So for example, here there's a sweater, and that's being offered for the upcoming season. As a merchant, I need to decide, should I buy the sweater? If I should buy, how many of these sweaters should I buy? How should I split my budget, budget, which has been allocated to me across this sweater and other sweaters based on a uh, bunch of constraints? But the constraints come in not only because of the total budget, but there's also some constraints in terms of, you know, you need to maintain certain uh, breadth of assortments in stores, certain set of sizes, different materials, and so on. So th there's a bunch of business rules which come into play in the second question, which is figuring out actually how to split, my, split the budget. So to be more specific, uh, what they have is essentially a bunch of attributes for each of the products they're looking to buy. Uh, so that is what is retailers often call a buy sheet. And a buy sheet is essentially a bunch of related products uh, which are in an Excel sheet. Traditionally, they, most retailers do this work in Excel. Uh, and there's, uh, you can see there's different columns for each row is a product. And there's different columns de uh, defining different attributes for the product. So the first row is the product name. There's you know, different sorts of tees and tops. The second product gives an attribute which is related to what type of top is it. Is it a basic tee uh, or a fashion tee and so on. The third one is what style it is. Uh, the fourth one is uh, the fit. Fifth is related to the fabric and so on. So, so these are the bunch of attributes that a merchant has. And on base of these attributes, the merchant needs to make decisions in terms of what will be the demand of this product across the country, how should I split my budget across these different products, and so on. So that's essentially the buy optimization problem. So now let's look at what data is available to a retailer. And traditionally, this is not the data a merchant uses. Merchant typically would use very high-level insights, BI sort of reports, along with some intuition, which they're very good at. What we've tried to do is essentially incorporate all the 
relevant data that retailers have uh, to be able to make uh, better decisions. And you'll see, as I go through the different data sources, many of these intuitively will feel useful. So there's transactions. Uh, transactions are essentially, for each customer uh, uh, sale in the store, we get what product they bought in what quantity at what price and with an anonymized customer ID. So that gives you some, if you go back to the previous season, one year back, essentially you can translate these into attributes of products and see what, how well they did and so on. So, so it's useful. Second is the products itself. Uh, there's uh, attributes, hierarchy, uh, images, and text, and all of these are relevant to actually being able to predict demand once you merge with transactions. There's customer information, anonymized uh, uh, location, demographic, and so on. You can tie that to the transactions to see you know, what sort of customers like what sort of things. And there's browse, which is related to the browse activity for customers online to see what customers in a particular area may be interested in, use that to project demand, and so on. So I won't go through the precise uh, machine learning approach because it's a 10 minute talk, but I do want to give you some insights that we used in terms of uh, uh, building out the pipeline. The, the challenges with the data is that it's very sparse. So if you look at transactions, how often do you go to a particular store and buy a particular type of item? Most of the customers, we just get one sample. Uh, there's assortment variation across stores but not every store carries the same product. There's assortment variation across time. Not every year in fashion you get the same products. Uh, and there's, but at the same time, there's heterogeneous data, there's images, there's uh, text, and there's uh, uh, attributes, information that we get, along with all the actual history that we've seen in terms of sales that we can use to predict. So what we do is essentially uh, we take the transactions, which is the historical demand, and then figure out a function which essentially maps the attributes and the time to the demand for that product. So that gives the raw uh, demand for the product. And we use the, uh, a mix of techniques. So there's random forest, which creates a decision tree on the attributes. There's a bunch of regressions we run after embedding text and images into a vector space to figure out how that maps into uh, the sales. And then there's a time series production component where we're actually projecting demand into the future for the entire group of products. So, so that's, that's the machine learning pipeline. But what we did is we kept the interface the same for the merchants because the merchants are still working with the buy sheets that you saw on a previous slide. So what they do is they upload the buy sheet into this pipeline. This is the pipeline that we built in the back. And then we use the attributes of the new products to figure out uh, by running the pipeline, figure out the de raw demand for those uh, products itself. And then once we get the raw demand, we apply the constraints and the business rules to essentially understand, uh, to help the buyers optimize uh, how they should invest across different products. So one challenge that we ran into, uh, even though our predictions were very good and we were being able to provide good guidance, one challenge that we ran into is adoption. And this is, I think, uh, broadly the case wherever you have humans interacting with uh, machine learning pipelines is, why should they trust your predictions? So there are two approaches we took to address that. One is we provided provenance. So provenance is, uh, in this context, uh, so if you look at a speci specific product which is uh, highlighted in blue, this is a buy sheet with a bunch of bras. On the right side, we actually show what is the attribute that we're using to base our prediction on? And what is the most important set of attributes of these products that we're using to base our prediction on? So we map the pipeline in the, uh, that we used to build out the demand prediction with uh, the set of attributes which are relevant for the uh, prediction itself. Uh, so, so the merchant gets some uh, uh, intuition as to what the predictions are based on. The second thing we did is provided merchants uh, some ability to tune between the uh, intuitive demand that they were going to place versus what they get from the prediction itself, so they're able to calibrate and weight both of them. So the key takeaways are, uh, traditionally retail has mostly uh, worked using siloed data, merchants use different data, e-com runs on different data, and so on. So bringing all the data together, uh, building a model helps improve predictions. Secondly, with humans in the loop, it's useful to have the same interface so that they don't have to change the business process, but also 
provide provenance and some ability to control the process to gain trust. Thank you.